can you yeah, yeah, change the spot? And now what we would like to do is that budget right here. Oh. 50,000 or something. It, uh, it's, it's a little less than that, but it should be more. We're paying you by the hour, not the minute. <laughs> They can do whatever they need to do, is basically what they say. Let's bring the meeting back to order. The next item on the agenda is. Commission General Regulation 10-02 Big Game Quotas for 2010. Take it away, Mike. Good afternoon, everyone. Mike Cox, Nevada Department of Wildlife. We'll start at the top with Commission Regulation 10-2 with the pronghorn antelope. A residence, <coughs> 2151 rifle hunt. Hopefully everyone uh, has uh, the Statewide summary of all the County Wildlife Advisory Board's recommendations. Wasn't, uh, wasn't many recommendations for pronghorn on any of the weapon classes, so I'd ask that you take uh, any comments from the game board and, and then and deliberate. Any uh, county game boards want to? <laughs> You want to go through all the antelope or hunt by hunt? I, it's probably best that we do it hunt by hunt um, to start with. And then the motion will be over all of them at the end, right? All the antelope? Mm -hmm. Well, we typically have a motion for each hunt. Um, <coughs> and I, we do have comments for the rifle and the muzzleloader. Beyond that, there's no other comments. Okay. We'll, so, we'll, so if you were to, you know, take those individually, and if there's no other further comments from the public today, you could okay. make a motion for the remaining. You speak. Okay. Um, as far as as when you when you um, at the time these hunts come up, if you or anyone within the third degree of consanguinity or affinity have a tag such as a heritage tag or a depredation tag or an incentive tag or any other kind of tag that's not awarded through the general draw. So that's everybody up to, what is it, great grandparents and down to grandchildren. Then you need to disclose that fact at the time uh, the vote is made. So I, I f personally feel that's a little overkill, but that's the way we gotta do it. Well, yeah, you need if if it's going to influence your vote, then you need to recuse yourself. If it's not, you just say so and, and drive on. Mr. McBeth, um, I am personally going to be further disclosing uh, in any of these hunts that I've actually made an application. So the insanity is even more uh, uh, than than what uh, the Dag just uh, uh, Dag Stockton just mentioned. Um, in other words, um, I'm voting on hunts of which I have a pending application. And until I am certain that the Ethics Commission is not going to think that that is some kind of a, uh, uh, a situation where I have a proprietary interest, I'm going to, out of the abundance of uh, caution and conservatism, uh, disclose when I have an application in, on any of these hunts. Thank you. Uh, that means probably every county board should do it too. <laughs> so remember this commission should do. <laughs> Commissioner Caparo. That means every member of this commission should too. We don't know what the results are. Well, we are filed. That's a good catch. Actually. I think we have to go through a draw, a random draw, and it's not like the landowner comp tag nat where we don't have to go through it where there's no draw, but we have just an equal chance of everybody else in the computer draw and I think if that ever came up I think we should contest that because that means everybody that makes the decision every county board member and their families would have to make that disclosure and I think that's personally I think it's far-fetched but until we get an order to do it 
uh, because it, everyone has an equal chance to go through the regular draw and on the on the regular draw and I think that that's uh, I have not been told we have to do that yet and until I'm told to do that and Commissioner Beth elected to do it but you know I'm not going to do it till I'm told I have to do it this is Don Septon. I'd like to just make one comment, and that is since everybody in this room has at one time or another told me that they never draw tags, I think the point's moot. That's your cost to push Hey, give me 10. <laughs> okay. So, uh, 2151, our resident rifle. We had one uh, alternative recommendation from Persian County. We've got a county board. Gary Coleman, Pershing County Game Board. Uh, the reason we wanted to stick with last year's quota, and we proposed it last year that we'd like to, you know, split that unit. The hunter congestion in there is getting terrible. We have a big unit, but a lot of the antelope that they're hunting are in small, or, you know, they're hunting in the same places. And last year it was just a zoo. You know, you have two or three good bucks. And there's 40 or 50 guys trying to kill those bucks. So we just want to stick with last year's uh, recommendation on the quota and uh, maybe next year address the hunter congestion. So that was our recommendation. So, specific. What area? 041042. Oh, okay, gotcha. Mike, is that a problem? Oh, I'm sure. I mean, it's we can live with it, I guess. Huh? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. You said they can live with it. Oh. <laughs> you said it resigned. <laughs> Pleasure of the board. Close the uh, public comment. Bring back the board. What do you want to do? Uh, make a motion. Hmm. Commissioner Mora. Uh, one question that I had is uh, you can live with the hunter congestion or you can live with last year's quota. <laughs> <laughs> good That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, we can live with the reduced quota. That's your motion. Commissioner Rain. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve. Hunt 2151 as presented with the exception of unit group 041042 in the quota of 136 in deference to Persian County's suggestion. Second that motion. Second. We have a motion uh, to approve Hunt uh, 2151 with the exception of 041042 reduced from 147 to 136. Uh, second by Commissioner Howe. <coughs> Any question? Commissioner McBeth? Uh, yeah, I just want to disclose that I have a pending application for antelope. <laughs> okay, anybody uh, have any other questions? Call for the motion. All for the motion say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Oppose, hearing none, motion passes. Great, we're off on a great start. Uh, next hunt is the muzzleloader resident hunt 2171. It was a new hunt last year. And just to let everyone know, uh, we had to do our best to guesstimate on the demand and success values last year. Uh, looks like we were slightly high. Uh, White Pine County wanted to add just a, a tag and a couple units, so we're, we're fine with that. But we did use the, the demand and success rates from the <coughs> 09 season to allocate the box to this hunt and then using the success rate to expand the tags from the, the uh, allowed buck harvest. So your recommendations are in in conjunction with the man success formula that you've used on all these other areas, right? right. Okay. <coughs> I, I think we should stay there with that. But anybody from the county boards who want to speak on this? Mm -hmm. Phil? Oh. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that somebody would say something here. Yeah. Born in White Pine County. Um, our reason, our reasoning was we have one year's demand success data. We just were hoping that we could keep it at two until we had some more information out there. That was our only reason for wanting one more tag. Thank you. Thank you. That's fine. 
close of public comment period, bring it back to the board. Uh, and Daryl and I was on, uh, Commissioner Cabrera and I were both on the uh, TAG Allocation Committee, and we set up this uh, formula, and we use it for everyone else. And and if, they, if the demand goes up and the success goes down, it'll adjust next year. And that's what the formula is for. So, you know, I think, uh, personally, I think we should stay with the department so we're consistent with everybody. That's just my personal opinion, but does anyone... Have, I close a public hearing. Any commissioner have any? Commissioner Rain? Um, I just, uh, I guess a question for Mr. Cox. I, my understanding is that when the numbers are down in the onesie one and two, that, I mean, the dividing line demand success formula, it's 1.49, it goes one way, 1.52, it goes the other way. Is that, I mean, it's just a very narrow, narrow split when you're going for a one to a two or. Yeah, a lot of hair split. It it doesn't matter either way. Um, you know, there's there's plenty of animals out there, so we're just trying to be true to it. Uh, I still remember Fred Church's voice in the back of my head that it's a place to start. It's a place to start. Um, if you want to make some slight adaptations and, and changes to that, I mean, that's that's what this social interface is all about. So. <coughs> Do we want to make a motion? Commissioner Moray? I'll move to approve muzzleloader hunt 2171 with the changes recommended from White Pine County. Which are? Which are uh, unit 132 to, through 134 and 245 from 1 to 2, unit 221 through 223, and 241 from 1 to 2. I'll second that. We have a motion to uh, adopt uh, 2171 with the uh, changes recommended by White Pine County Board uh, 132, 134, 245, 1 to 2, uh, 221, 223, 241, 1 to 2. And we have a second. We have any discussion on that? If not, I'll call for the question. All for the Motion say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm opposed. Uh, motion passes. <coughs> now, if you'd like, um, all the remaining pronghorn hunts uh, had no alternative recommendations. Uh, we have the archery, resident archery, antelope 2161, the horn shorter than ears. 2181, and then the companion non-resident hunts for the any legal weapon 2251, and the archery 2261. Again, no alternative recommendations for those. Do you have any questions about those uh, you had that the counties didn't bring up? Please ask. I'm, I still have to open it for public comment on it, even though the county boards had no no changes or opposition to it. So I'm going to open up public comment on, on 2161, 2181, 2251, or 2261. Hearing no public comment, I'll close the public comment period, bring it back to Commission Commissioner Capurro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, I move that we uh, accept the Department's recommendation for hunts 2161, 2181, 2251, and 2261 with regard to resident and, re resident and non resident antelope as they are proposed. Second. We have a motion to accept the Department's regulation uh, re uh, for 2161, 2181, 2251, and 2261 as proposed by the Department. Everybody understand the motion? Call for the motion. All for the motion say aye. 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 Anybody Aye. opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Let me open up the uh, elk table here for a second. <coughs> All right, uh, now we're into elk. 
first hunt is the depredation bull hunt or antlered hunt 4102. Uh, Lincoln County had a uh, alternative recommendation. Corey Lytle, Lincoln Cab. Uh, we want to reduce from 10 to 5, um, basically for the reasons stated there. You know, and I've, I've brought this hunt up before. It's kind of a thorn in our side, so to speak. Um, about, you know, I, I can't quote statistics and I can't quote trophy quality on this, but the majority of the bulls killed on this hunt are trophy quality bulls. They're not necessarily the same bulls in on these fields doing the damage all summer long. The majority of the bulls that are living on these fields are lower class, younger age, age class bulls. Uh, you know, I even know of last year, two or three of the bulls that were killed on this hunt weren't even killed. In, they weren't even bulls that were going to the fields. They were killed within that five mile radius of those fields, but they weren't necessarily the ones going into the, into the alfalfa every night. And so, you know, we know out of these five tags, you're still going to have at least an 80% success. You're going to kill four out of the five. We're still going to kill some, some of the bulls. The, the harassment's going to continue on the private property <coughs> because there's still uh, two cow hunts coinciding with this hunt of 20 tags apiece. So, you know, the depredation portion of it still remains. <coughs> we might be able to save one or two of the trophy elk that are in that area. That's, that's basically the argument. Any questions? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, last year there was some discussion about a spike hunt. Um, what would you know? Hey, you that know was to... that was part of this, and we're working on that. I've, I've talked with Mike. I've talked with Mike Scott, our biologist. You know, we're really trying to get our hands around a management type scenario or a, a tool in the toolbox, so to speak, that would address a management <coughs> issue like this, where we could take out lower age class bulls, whether it be a spike hunt, a uh, five point or less type hunt. You know, we're working on designations. We realize there's law enforcement issues that come into play there. Even on a limited basis, we need to start looking at something in some of these areas to kind of maintain the quality, but still have a control on these on these elk numbers. You know, in each unit, um, we're yet to come up with a for sure answer. I do know too. Also, in 231, there were 15 uh, calf elk killed last year that were males. So there's, you know, there's a potential in that realm to kind of, kind of. You know, carry into the into the bull harvest too. The reason that, I'm sorry, Mr. Jim, just kind of follow up that. The reason I asked that question is basically I'm seeing that something along that lines might very well be the solution to perhaps the problem in this these particular units and other areas of the state as well. It sounds like something we really need to push forward. Thank you. But well, if I could speak, the, the spike hunt is for the entire unit. We're just talking about this depredation, the Atlanta Farms area, and whether you're a six-year-old or a six-month-old, a two-year-old or a twelve-year-old bull, um, they're all out there. And in fact, there are a lot of mature bulls, but uh, I'm not sure if that is for the unit wide. And we have been waiting for the state of Utah's data to come back. They had an unlimited spike hunt on the, the southwest uh, desert unit, the Indian Peaks area, uh, right across the border from us. So until we get the, the harvest data back, you know, this summer, we'll see what dent they did, their success rates, uh, talk to them about how the hunt went, and, and then we'll, we'll meet with Lincoln County and try to move forward with a strategy or two. Hasn't that been going on years, though, in Utah? They've had a management hunt, which has been a point class restriction of five points or less. But uh, this is the first time for that large unit in Utah to have a spike only, unlimited spike only hunt. What about the landowner issues on this? Because if, if we if we have promised them <coughs> ten tags and we cut it back, uh, you know, uh, it's hard to. It's very difficult on a on a on a landowner uh, or depredation to say, hey, don't shoot this one, just shoot this one. I mean, it's really tough to do. But I mean, do you have any landowner issues on that to reduce? Well, I was going to maybe ask Corey to come back up. You know, I don't think we're comfortable with this hunt. Uh, I don't think it's as effective as we'd want it 
to be. And, uh, you know, I think we agree, both myself and our region, that we are having bulls harvested that are likely uh, doing very little, if any, depredation. Uh, we might look at the boundary change, but I'm just curious if the Atlanta Farms manager, how accepting would he be with fewer, fewer tags this year? And then looking at a different depredation strategy for, for next year. The elk will still they'll, they'll still be harassed. They're still going to be pushed out of these fields, you know, from daylight to dark um, every day. They they pull out of the fields, they go into the thick PJ on those surrounding areas, and then they come back at night. Uh, there's two cow hunts going on at the same time. There's an early cow hunt during this hunt, and then there's a late cow hunt during this hunt. Each one of those hunts have 20 tags in them. So there's 40 more hunters in this area harassing the elk, trying to keep them, you know, limited to their use on the fields. Um, it's our opinion that five tags is going to do just as much depredation, uh, you know, mitigation as ten tags. What we're what we're saving is maybe three or four of the trophy quality bulls that come from, you know, Mount Grafton, 20 miles away, to come in there to rut, and they don't get smoked right off Highway 93, because that's historically what's happened in this in this hunt, is you're you're killing three or four of your best, highest quality, greatest genetic bulls for a depredation hunt that's aimed at killing you know the the resident bulls that are there that are four five six year old bulls living on the farm and so it's it is it's a tough deal but we think you're still going to have you know the property owner still going to be you know compensated with the harassment and just the fact that there's other hunts going on uh, uh, you know you you think that they're going to it's going to solve the problem with harassment but what does the landowner think because he's the one that's going to complain well, that's, they, yeah, that's what I've been there is what's his perception if we reduce these is they submit a bill to end out every year anyway regardless of whether there's 30 bulls killed or 30 elk killed there or 100 elk killed there they still submit a bill to end out every year and, and it works through its its system um, we're looking at the difference of about four bulls four elk between 10 tags and five tags 80 percent success last year there were 10 tags if you have 80 percent success this year it's full. So, you know, we're just trying to save, you know, and this, this hunt's been going on for, I think this is the sixth year now, and there's been some smoking bulls. And it's, it's a popular hunt. I can ask each one of these guys. That everybody in the state is tuned into this hunt because the people that can put in for it are the ones that are in the waiting period for the regular trophy hunt. And it's, it's a great hunt because it, it starts like August 1st and it runs till the end of September. So you draw that tag, there's a good chance you're going to kill a, a really nice bull. And it's not necessarily doing getting the benefits that it was originally, you know, targeted at. But, and I don't want to. You got a question, Commissioner? Yes, yeah. Commissioner Farrell. Thank you very much. I, I, I maybe it is a boundary problem sort of thing. I'm I'm a little uneasy about dropping the quota from ten, you know, cutting it to fifty percent, um, and that when the quota has been uh, ten. And that again, maybe it is a boundary <coughs> problem that should be addressed, but I, I do have some problems with dropping it all the way from 10 to 5. Thank you, Corey. Any other? Uh, did I bring that to public comment yet? Mm, check again. Anybody public comment on this? If not, I'll close the uh, public comment period. Bring back the commission. Uh, I just get worried about the landowners if, if we cut depredation tags, you know, I don't know what they'll say uh, he was first. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Morey. What, what's your opinion, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if mine's, mine's necessary. Ask the director. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Um, <coughs> Atlanta Farms, didn't they uh, make, make, file a complaint with us and we actually had to get the arbitration board involved? Um, so yeah, it was a couple years ago. Uh, we've we've kind of um, agreed to disagree, and and they submit a you know nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollar claim every year, um, and they've kind of agreed that if we can you know show that we're working to try to minimize the use of those fields, um, they're willing to take that check and. And, and just call it good, but 
Again, I, I think we need a, a little bit better strategy than what we have today. Uh, it just hasn't been worked out yet. I think it's really your, your discretion. Um, if, if we reduce it by five, we're going to kill significantly fewer elk. Is that going to, I mean, is there a cause and effect with the number of elk we're killing or how many are depredating the fields? Um, I, I think it's the, it's the act of having hunters pursuing those animals for two months that keeps them out of the field. I'll, I'll tell you that. that that's I agree with Lincoln County. With 40 cow tags, you will likely achieve that objective. Commissioner uh, Ray. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, you next? just in the spirit of perhaps spirit of compromise on this, I'm worried about landowners. Cab's recommendation. I am about ready to make a motion for eight. I would, I would, if uh, it's ready for motion. Not yet. Not yet. Commissioner McBeth. Uh, yes. Um, uh, I would like to make my uh, mo uh, my uh, disclosure again that I do have an application for elk pinning. <laughs> um, but furthermore, I also want to make an additional disclosure. Um, uh, I am uh, I have a brother owns a ranch in Unit 222. He uh, has been receiving and and will likely receive incentive tags, three incentive tags uh, for uh, the unit group. 111 to 115, 221, 222, and uh, I'm just uh, disclosing uh, because of that relationship, uh, the fact that uh, he does get that uh, those tags. Will you be voting then? I will be voting. Okay. Anybody have any other comments? If not, I'll accept a motion. Commissioner Rain. Hey, Mr. Um, I too have an elk, um, elk uh, thing pending, uh, elk application pending, but I don't believe that anyone within th third degree of sanguinity or consanguinity of me has ever drawn an elk tag in the state of Nevada to my knowledge. <laughs> and there's a lot of them out there. <laughs> However, that will not affect my vote. I move to approve Hunt 4102 as proposed by the department with the <clears throat> change that in unit group 22, 222B, 231B, the proposed quota be changed from 10 to 8. And second. Spirit of compromise. We have a motion to approve uh, Hunt 40 and a second to uh, approve Hunt 4102 with the exception of changing 222 and 231, reducing it from 10 to 8. Everybody understand the motion? If so, I'll call for the question. All for the motion say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Uh, Hearing nay. What's that? Nay. You vote against it? We had one at one opposing it, and motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Well, they can go out and shoot six and a half. Huh? Six and, and a half. Six and a half elk. Uh, <laughs> next hunt is our full <clears throat> resident any legal weapon. On 4151. Before we have the uh, advisory boards come up, uh, I wanted to point out an error I made, uh, and I didn't correct it before we printed it. Uh, there was a demand, slight demand value uh, between the for unit 072 and 074 uh, between the rifle and the archery demand. So our actual recommendation should have been 82 tags instead of 83. And then I'll address the archery when we get there. Um, and then an explanation on 091, which is our interstate hunt that we have with the state of Utah, that hunters from both states can hunt, can hunt uh, both sides of the state line. We have a partnership of wildlife tag, uh, three of those and uh, actually, and we shared our harvest information with our counterparts in the state of Utah. Uh, they saw that we had one of our PIW tag holders go to pilot, harvest a bull, uh, and they were concerned about it and we're going like, what's the deal? It's one, one bull. 
So they asked us to reduce our tag quota to three instead of four, which they have four, uh, with the assumption that we may have another PIW hunter in 2010 that could go to pilot. So to uh, maintain our, our peace with, with our counterparts, <coughs> we told them that we would, we would ask uh, the tag quota of three instead of, instead of four, even though they have four. So I just, I just thought I'd let you know. Uh, there's no sword for us to fall on, but that's, uh, I just thought I'd let you know. What other changes did we have? Rick? We had several, so I'll just let um, uh, game boards come up. And okay. <coughs> Any, the game boards with sure. changes, come on up. For the record, Paul Dixon, Clark County. Uh, I appreciate the explanation on the interstate hunt 091 of why it went from four to three, but there was a fairly strong voice or voices in the Clark County cab and Commissioner <coughs> Power, McBeth can say, that we're concerned that we don't have equity across that and how our PIW tag, as you pointed out, plays into that equity was not part of the discussion we had and I don't know if it would have made any difference. People felt that it should have stayed at four so that we have equal opportunity since it is an interstate hunt. That's all. Next, next, next. I'm Kevin Strozzi from the Nye County Game Board. Uh, we didn't have a quorum at our meeting, so I'm only speaking for myself. Um, but uh, with the area 16, 161 through 164 early tag, uh, Endow recommended an increase from five tags to 12 tags. Yeah, and I see that Eureka County had a, a recommendation to, to lower that back down. Uh, I talked to Tom Donham, the biologist in the area. The reason he wanted to increase those tags uh, is because with the amount of bulls that they want to get killed in that unit, he would have had to add like 12 tags to the late hunt. And there's already a big problem with congestion out there in that late hunt. And we are going to start talking about possibly splitting that late hunt up next year to alleviate some of that congestion. Area 16 is a big area, but everyone on that late hunt hunts the same six canyons. So um, I myself don't have a problem with it at all. Um, area 16, there are so many bulls out there now, and we're creeping up on that population cap. So we need to be pretty proactive right now before we reach it and have to go out there and kill a whole bunch of elk. And that won't make anybody, you know, end out real popular with the public. Um, area 16 wide, there isn't a range of mountains or hills out there that doesn't have elk permanently in it now. It's not one herd like it used to be that all went to Table Mountain. So I don't think it's a problem um, killing those 12 bulls there. You're not going to take all the herd bulls out. And then next year, maybe we can split that season and lower those numbers back down. That's all I have. Uh, Corey Light of Lincoln Cab in uh, 231, 242, 241. We kind of got concerned with the 79 number. We kind of feel that the hunter quality, the quality of the hunt would be better served if it was dropped to 70. Um, we had a, a real high success rate last year with only 60 tags in the area. Um, we still harvest a lot of bulls, but the hunter success is a lot better. The hunt quality is a lot better. Um, it's a very congested unit much like what he was talking about. Uh, you know, every elk hunter brings four, four buddies and the area gets very congested. And the more tags you have in certain areas, it actually puts more pressure on the game and, and the hunter success drops. So we felt that dropping that would actually make a better hunt and still kill the animals. Shane Bourne, White Pine County. Um, speaking about the 13 muzzleloader elk hunt. Um, our concerns in White Pine County are that with the bulls that were killed in that unit last year, the number one non-typical bull in the state was killed in there, and I believe the number two or three typical bull in the state was killed in that unit. Uh, what unit? I'm sorry, early rifle. I'm sorry, not muzzleloader. Um, unit? 13, 131, 132. This year, 
you're going to have influx of PIW and heritage tag holders. And that unit, it has some very genetically challenged bulls also. If you throw in all the PIW hunters and the heritage tag hunters, you have a chance to throw that unit back, trophy quality wise, back to where it was about eight, nine years ago in a heartbeat. And we're highly concerned about that. Um, talked to Chad Bliss at length. He wasn't able to make it here today because of personal reasons. Uh, Eureka County has exactly the same feelings, although their recommendation, I believe, was two and not one. Thank you. Thank you. Here, the county board. Close the uh, public hearing. Uh, Mike, uh, what's, what's story in 131, 332? You think the PIW would be there? Well, last year we had one PIW harvest. Um, neither of the heritage did. Word travels fast of what happened last year in terms of where people go this year. Um, we have been seeing um, a lot of mature bulls on survey. Um, so it's a big area. Well, and you're going to find in a lot of our recommendations is biologically it makes Zippo, zero difference, um, whether you shoot three more mature bulls or two more mature bulls with our conservative, it's, it's, it's really, it's a social issue. So uh, I, I think, you know, for whatever merits the, the game boards have, you should listen to that and make your recommendation. Commissioner Moray, what, uh, I know it's always an, an, of interest to cattlemen if we keep cutting them down, cutting them down. What's, what's, uh, and you represent that industry. Okay, here's the way here's the way I see it, and uh, I certainly am not questioning the knowledge of the people that got up and spoke about what type of bulls they're seeing or, or what uh, uh, you know the, the the potential for trophies and the reduction of that. <coughs> However. Uh, it seems like there's a trend going here that Endow is setting their recommendations and the sportsmen or the hunters want to harvest below those recommendations. And elk does happen to be a species that uh, is hard to manage and I believe that we do have a commitment to the ranching and the landowners to harvest these animals if they're available out there to harvest at a rate recommended by Endow. Uh, and let me just explain. Um, we have a statewide plan um, in terms of the bull ratio. We, we have not been um, focused on that for years. Uh, we, we'd have, I've, I figured probably, we, what do we have recommended right now? 783, we'd probably have 1,500 bull tags if we were to shoot every herd down to 40 bulls per hundred, which is the maximum in the statewide management plan. And I'm sure we'd all be getting Christmas cards for that. Um, <clears throat> So we are not recommending, just want to make it crystal clear, we are not recommending bull quotas for trophy quality bull hunting. We're not. So, so if, if that, and I mean, I got my personal opinion, and it's not going to come out today, but that is what we're doing. We're trying to manage uh, for something kind of in between, I guess, knowing that 40 bulls per hundred is not really realistic. Um, and and uh, we're trying to provide opportunity and, and when we kill lots of cows, we're killing more cows than bulls. We, we, we really shoot that bull ratio up high and so. Let's ask Director Mayor here. I mean, I know 
it's a constant battle, but your thoughts on it? Well, I, being an old deer biologist, you make hay when the hay is growing. And I understand the congestion issues. I think we need to be taking that maybe a more serious approach next year about splitting zones, spreading this out, but we're leaving a lot of opportunity on the table. Uh, you don't stockpile these things. They don't they curl up and die at some age. You don't, all bulls don't need to be 12 years of age to be a trophy bull. Uh, the female carries the, 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 gen, the genes for a, for a big bull just like the bulls do So and their progeny. So, I, I, you know, we're, I think we need to select some areas and focus on creating some trophy stuff, and then we need to be providing, um, you know, opportunity when opportunity, because it's not always going to be this way. Um, and the other thing we need to probably have Mike do is look in the future. If we continue going the way we're going, what does this mean down the road five years or so? Um, there may be a pill to swallow that no one wants to swallow. Um, so I, I, I'm concerned about that as well. So, uh, And I'll, I will also tell you that every biologist I've ever met in my whole life is ultra conservative. <laughs> so, so what we're doing is we're being conservative bringing these quotas to you and then to be conservative on top of conservative so I, I'm just that that's just the, the reality of it thank you Mr. Capurro thank you I, I agree with uh, the director's remarks and I'd like to go a little bit further on that real quickly uh, had, had we perhaps issued more tags in the north uh, rubies and the east Humboldts for Rocky Mountain sheep we may not that might not that might have uh, either uh, eliminated or reduced the amount of die-off. So now we've lost uh, a whole lot of sheep that nobody's going to have a chance at. Yeah, you know, You're right, you can't stockpile. You can't stockpile them. And the other thing is that male-only harvest, and Tony laid this out, doesn't affect total population. It changes the ratio of males to, to females in the population. And, you know, we're trying to, that in concert with, with cows, I mean, that's a management strategy for the population. You just can't do it on one or you know the other so um, I mean it's really an, a social issue here that we need to come to grips with at, at, at some point so, I don't, we're not going to take a hard stand and say it's got to be 10 versus 8 uh, I mean that's really up to the Commission and the, and the, and the general public that I always tell you what the consequences are down the road that always puts a commission between the department and the county board so yeah, I, uh, uh, you know, the instructions of the biologist are to do the biological work, to produce a biological recommendation, and let the politics be played at the, at the commission level, because that's where it should be made, at the commission level. If the biologists, and this happened in California, were making a political decision with the quota recommendations, and then it came to the co commission, you got, you got two political decisions on top, and that's, the polarity of that is not good. So, any, uh comments here. Uh, I close the public hearing on this. Commissioner Kapur. Are you ready for a motion? Yeah, I didn't see anybody else talking, so I'm ready for a motion. Uh, with respect to uh, elk antler, Denny legal weapon hunt number 4151, I recommend that we that we adopt the, the uh, department's recommendations with the following exceptions that uh, 131, 132 late be increased uh, to 21, and uh, that uh, unit 161 to 164 late be increased to 49. Uh, which, what was that at? Uh, 161 to 164 late. Increased to 49. 49? <coughs> yes. And did you also make the change uh, any change on 091 and there's a change on 072 late I had, I left that to the uh, I included that with the department's recommendation for the numbers that they chose to show in the proposed quarter the only exceptions that I included were 131 132 late to increase from 20 to 21 161 to 164 late from 42 to 49 that's it. Asking what number he has for 091. Huh? Asking what number he has for 091. 091, what number? 091 was 4. Okay. What number do you have for 072? 
Which one? Early or late? Late. 83. The department changed that to 82, right? Yes. Yeah, we had an error in our demand values, and I had asked it if we could change that to. Okay, I wrote that down in the wrong place. 82. So want to go 82 or 83 at 072? 82. Okay. If thank that's you. the department. And sorry. on 091, you wanted how many? <clears throat> Four. Four. It's your purview. Okay. Well, I, you know, I don't really care what Utah does, frankly, in this situation. I have a motion. I can't discuss it without a second. Second for discussion. Got a second by Commissioner Rain. Okay, I'll repeat the motion. For Hunt 4151, 072, we're going to go with 82. Uh, with 091, we're going to go with 4. Uh, 131, 132 late, we're going to go to with 21. 161, 164 late, we're going to change it to 49. That's the motion with a second. Everybody understand? Oh, yeah. That's Excuse me. That's, That's the motion. Everybody understand it? I'll call for the question. All for the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed. Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. Next. <clears throat> Next is uh, resident antler muzzleloader. On 4156, there were uh, no alternative recommendations for that hunt. And why don't you take the next uh, 4156, 4161, 4181, 4176, and 4111 all together since <coughs> there's no changes? Okay. Yeah, let me. Um, so I go down to the, the next one, which is 4161. Uh, I'd ask that we, again, I had an error in the demand values between the rifle and archery. So instead of 16, I request 18 uh, for the archery. Quoted in 07274. And then uh, <coughs> I was uh, not on the same page with our field biologist in terms of uh, distributing cow harvest. So in 4181, um, we were looking to, uh, we, we should have had 80 tags for 072 early. And for 074 early, it uh, should be 21. <coughs> And then in 4176, uh, another error I, sh I we should have had in, for 072, a quote of 23 instead of 24. And, 20, and then we... <coughs> Mike, did you say 22 or 23? 23. 23. 23. And then those tags... <coughs> Uh, let's see, then, and then in 4111, 072, uh, quota should have been 19 instead of 23. Okay. Let's open that up. Well, there's no public, there's no cabs, but I got to open a public comment. Any public comment on Hunt 4156, 4161? Uh, 4181, 4176, or 4111. Hearing none, I'll close the public comment period and bring it back to Commission, Commissioner Rain. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I said a question on, on how um, things happened. One was in Hunt 4156 in the first unit group list there, 061, 071. I mean, that quota went up dramatically there for the muzzle loader, and it also went up in uh, Hunt 4176, the same unit groups, 061071. Rifle or any legal weapon went down significantly. What happened yeah. to the pot in that dynamic? It seemed. I, I, I way definitely wild. Need, need to explain. Um, we're trying to get uh, quite a few hunters into that hunt, 
And last year we had some congestion in the rifle hunt with the tag quotas we had. And we're right up against this Idaho border. And we felt that by pushing any more or even equal number of rifle tags in that unit group, we were going to be counterproductive in harvesting bulls. We know there's, there's movement of bulls. Uh, probably prior to that November start in Idaho where they're, they're going to be unavailable to our hunters. Um, so we, we, we decided to jump out of the demand success slightly and try to make uh, more use of the muzzleloader in archery seasons where we felt we'd have a greater chance of those bulls still being in Nevada. Uh, there'd be less congestion because overall those tag quotas would be smaller. Um, and until we get a split in the rifle season for 2011, um, we wanted to try to do something uh, to still put pressure on those bulls. And we just felt that putting all of it into the rifle season could, could backfire. I could follow up on that briefly, Mr. Chairman. So the, the, is this the only exception from the demand success formula? Was this this unit these unit that group? I'm aware of? Yes. Okay. Because it just seemed, you know. And it didn't aberrant. seem it was. Yes. Okay. You're deviating from demand successes. What would it be with demand success? Well, we probably would have had. Um, if you go back to uh, rifle, we recommended 88. It'd probably be about 110. Um, and the muzzle loader probably would have been about 10 instead of 8, or well, instead of 31, about 10. Um, and the archery probably would have been around 12. Very similar to last year. We didn't have a ton of, ton of demand. Success rate's not all that great. Mm -hmm. I just don't like change deviating. We got a formula, and we go by that, and... Uh, you know, everybody, all the hunter groups agreed to that, and uh, I think that's what, you know, we should go by, but that's my opinion. Commissioner Cabrera? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with your comments, and also, you know, that's an increase of 400%. I mean, it's it's a, a four times yeah. the number of tags. It, 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 it almost, I, I would almost put it in the category of social engineering and the issuance of tags. We're trying to force the issue with respect to putting people in the field, forcing them into using muzzle loaders when they may have been more comfortable with using rifles. I don't think we ought to play groups off against each other like that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anybody have any comments? Hearing none, if you want to make a motion. Commissioner Rain? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I guess I can make a motion. I tend to uh, agree with you know that 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 last statement and that you know gotta go demand success does seem most reasonable and therefore I move approve hunt 41 let's see make sure I didn't didn't back up here we need 41 it's you oh wait a minute if we did if we change this uh, I'm thinking about, I want to go back I would, want, what I would want. I would like to revise the quota in Hunt 4151. It was previously approved from 88 to 110. Uh, go on Hunt 4156. Unit group 061071. Same one I was just referring to. From 8 to 10, or from 31 to 10. Excuse me. Well, let's see, and there's our department had a change as well. Hunt 4161, 061071 from 17 to 12, 072074 from 16 to 18, 072 early from 77 to 79. Say that again. 072 early, and this is in 4181. Oh, 4181. 4181, sorry. Got it. 072 early. 77 to 79 as presented 
It was 80, wasn't it? Was it 80? Yeah. Oops. <coughs> I guess I read the screen wrong, sorry. Transpose, thank you. 074 early to 21, from 22 to 21. That's in 4181 still. And 4176. Um, what would that have, the 061071? We didn't get a number on that about demand success. What would that have been in dem under demand success? Which unit? On 4176, area 061071, what would have been under demand success? Uh, that's the cow season, so, so we manage those with demand success for cows, so they're separate from the bull okay. demand success. Unit group 072 from 24 to 23. Okay. Four, hunt. 4111, unit group 072, from 23 to 19. Leaving all the other recommendations for those hunt groups, as well as 4251, 4256, and 4261 alone, or as presented by the department. Which ones are you going to leave alone? 4251. 4256 and 4261. Okay. Second motion. We have a motion and a second. I'm going to read it again to make sure everybody understands it. Then we can discuss it. Uh, ready? Okay. On 4151, unit 061, 071, change from 88 to 110. Uh, 072 to 074, late. 83 to 82, uh, 131, 132 late, 20 to 21, 161 to 164 late, 42 to 49, Hunt 4156, 061, 071, change from 31 to 10, Hunt 4161, unit 061 to 071, change it to 12, 072, 074, change it to 18, hunt 4181, 072 early, change it to 80, hunt 074 early, change it to 21, hunt 4176, 072 unit, change it to 23, hunt 4111, Unit 072, change to 19. For, on 4251, leave the same as recommended by the department. Leave on 4256 as recommended by the department. And on 4261 as recommended by the department. Did I get the changes right? Commissioner uh, Wallace. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did we not already vote on 4151? Correct. To, um, yeah. To we'd mend the, that those yeah. going to revoke because that. And because what was the change in that one again? Because of the demand success uh, zero six one to zero seven yeah, one, one, just one, ten. one ten one ten just the top one just zero six Eight, one zero eight, seven one, one ten. right one ten yeah that's what I said I hope yes well I got lost because I thought we'd already voted on that one. Yeah, yeah, we had that number. Mike. Um, I, I would, that was my best guess, but I guess I'd like to do two things. If, if that's the pleasure of the commission, uh, I guess I'd like to go back to that particular qu uh, quarter array and double check uh, using the exact demand success, what, what the values would be. Sure. But that hunt, uh, if, if we put 110 tags in that, um, it, it's going to be a nightmare. And I've, I've been trying to stress to everyone, whether it's biologists, game board members, seasons come first, we have to focus on the season. Uh, and many times what happens is they forget about the, the concern about the season and then they try to uh, put lots of tags into, into a season structure that's not meant for it. This is the case here. Um, I guess I would ask that 
we're, we're going to look at this along with a lot of others like, like Lincoln County, um, Central Nevada for Nye County to have more split seasons. Um, but, but to shove that number of hunters into that hunt this year, um, we're all going to take a lot of, a lot of heat. And uh, I would ask that if we're going to try to be closer to the demand success, that we, we don't go above you know, 90 tags in that rifle. Yeah, that, you know, we're talking about demand Can success. Speak addressing so. this means you brought up something different. OK, we will in a minute. OK, thank you. Commissioner Caparro. Well, again, my concern is that we aren't the proper way to handle this, Mike, in my in my view, is to split the seasons if we're getting into that point. Not to try to force the issue between what type of weapons that a hunter chooses to use to hunt with. And that's my objection to it. Uh, that's why you know, I agree with the chairman. Uh, we need to stick to demand, uh, to the demand uh, kill cycle and decide exactly how many we're going to need there. And if we had to split the season to reduce congestion, so be it. We should have done that. Exactly. Next year it's optional. Yeah, it should have been, it should have been done last year. Okay, I'm going to hold it up to a county board here again. County Domendi, uh, Elko CAB. Uh, this country you're talking about is near and dear to me. My family ranched up in that country for 75 years. When you start talking about November 6th through November 20th to put 110 people in that country, several years ago there was uh, elk hunters that were snowed in at Big Bend Campground and had to pay several thousand dollars to have their camp trailer towed out with a bulldozer. Um, you start funneling 110 tags into this country, there's only one real access point and that's the Meadow Creek Road. It gets snowed in, the only other access is through Idaho. Um, the rancher that I was, I was raised with a young fellow that was working on or managing a ranch out in Idaho, and they have a lot of problems. I'm sure, Pete, you've heard about it on the Idaho side of all them elk being out there in Idaho. So, I mean, it almost looks like when you put that many in there, you're going to cause a failure. Weather could cause you grief. It's not an extremely big country when you start putting 110 people in there. Uh, I, in this situation, I agree with the department in doing something different and, and getting away from the demand success and, and allowing people to go in there maybe earlier and, and, and do this because if the wrong weather pattern hits, this is going to be an ugly mess. It, it, it really could be. I've, I've known people who drew those tags who didn't hunt it because of the weather. Uh, um, older men who just could not compete. I know of, of one young lady who had the tag in there she had to find two men from Elko that I'm both from, I'm familiar with both of them. They had to go hunt elk on a snowmobile. And they had to bring the elk on a snowmobile out. So when you start thinking about this unit that late in the season, uh, you, you better really start and thinking about that. Because there's some real special things that could happen there. And you may be setting up a, a real big mess. Uh, in the earlier seasons, you might get a bigger success if you hunt harder earlier. And yes, they are pushing them out into Idaho. And the biologists are saying that's where the elk are wintering now. They used to winter in the Bruno River. I've snowmobiled in there and seen two, three, four hundred in the Bruno. In the last couple of years, they haven't even been in the Bruno. They're in Idaho. The whole herd is. Everybody. Some guys said that they've, uh, one fellow I talked to snowmobiled a thousand miles in there this winter. And the elk are gone. They're in Idaho. Don't ask me to explain that, but it's, it's, it's creating something that, you may have to address at a later date. Thank you. I'd have to support the Department of Wildlife from personal experience. I guided a very unhappy elk hunter in 071, 061 last year, bought a landowner elk tag, and uh, we hunted Merritt Mountain, Gold Creek, first two days of the season. Third day of the season, after not being able to find any elk of any significance, we traveled up to the Bruno River and talking to hunters up there. Uh, 
between 500 and 700 elk across that river head in Idaho. I questioned that figure, but I talked to the game warden who has that area, and he said that's an accurate figure. There's so much pressure in there that elk are doing what elk are going to do. They get out of the area. Thank you. Ben? Glenn Copeland. Uh, in uh, Commissioner Raines is uh, um, request that he uh, he also put in the non-resident elk. Are we talking about that also? Because in his motion has the non-resident elk, and I thought we were just doing the resident right now. We're doing the hunt that I said. Because there was some there was some uh, some other counties that had some information on the non-resident too. Just confused a little bit. Yes. No, he only did it through 4111, if I recall. Um, he went, yeah, he went through the remainder of the elk. Uh, All of them. He went through the remainder of the elk. Good job. Right. Included the non-resident. At the screen, yeah. non I could okay. just withdraw those last three units or head groups. That was uh, not actually intentional to skip over that other recommendation. Thank you for us. Uh, no, you want to withdraw with 40 withdraw the rec um, recommendation for 4251, 4256 and 4261. Is that okay at the second? Yes, sir. Okay. Those Thanks are withdrawn anyway. But you know, this might send a message to the department if you know, if if we need more instead of cutting the high success groups down and throwing low success people and increase that, stick to the formula and split it if you need to. I, I split it. So Chairman, I, I, I fully agree with that. I, you Sorry. know, that, that reduces the, con, the uh, con, congestion, but to, to, again, to try to force the issue regarding weapons used, it's not the way to do this. Right. So I, I actually did, uh, went back to the, the actual numbers for demand and it would generate 97. 4151. 97. 17, muzzle loader. What huh? 4156. 17. And 12, 4161. Archery. That's what we had. We have a motion and we have the exact demand success and if we're going to stick with demand success we should amend the motion and put these numbers in. Amend the motion to uh, reflect those two numbers as stated? Second. Okay. I'll change my second. Okay. Do I have to re-go these errors again or are we okay with them? Okay with them? Commissioner Moray. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just have a comment on this that I understand your point about about being fair to what uh, different uh, weapon types and weapon groups however I believe that this is a this is a unique circumstance here and and it it kind of reiterates my point that elk are, are a very very difficult species to manage in relationship to to the hunting because what we find is that uh, if we try to address a situation like like Endow has in this case uh, we sometimes make decisions that shackles their ability to respond to situations out there and I think in this case, they have shown that they've wanted to respond to a situation of hunter congestion, a situation of, of animals leaving the state. And the reason that they're doing that is so that, that they can provide opportunity to these animals before they leave the state. And that's why I see a problem with going back to uh, those numbers that are different from what were originally proposed. Chairman? Uh, 
Commissioner Kapur. Thank you. I, that's akin to allowing the camel's nose under the tent, as far as I'm concerned. What, what's to prevent next time coming back in other areas and saying, well, you approved moving some of the the all weapons over to muzzleloader or archery or whatever in the future? If, if it's all right to be a little bit pregnant in this situation, uh, then I don't see how we can turn down any sort of recommendation in the future that involves the very same thing. It's not unique. Pretty soon, ethically, we'll have to earn our weapons group, huh? Maybe that's what we ought to do, just go to any weapon. Commissioner Mc Commissioner McBeth. Um, Mike, if, uh, if, if, if the perceived problems or if the problems that are, you know, potentially projected by uh, uh, the, the folks from uh, Elko County, will the success rate drop because of the, uh, I mean, is it possible that the sex success rate is going to drop in these areas, right, because of the congestion? Yeah, I mean, it could drop in half from, you know, whatever it was, 50-some percent. Nine tags could make it drop in half. 49, it could drop in half if we have um, people on top of other people and then forcing elk off you go across the state line. It's the lowest in the state last year. Um, we're, we're a year behind on the season structure. Absolutely. Commissioner Cox, Burrow. if you drop from 90, or go from 96 to 97. 88. 88 to 97. Well, but last year's quota was 96. Oh, it, yes. And, and you go to 97. Why are you going to drop in half from what from what your success ratio was last year? Yeah, in 2008, we only had 40 some rifle tags. Um, those elk did not have that learned behavior from only 40 some bull hunters out there at the same time. In one year, we practically doubled the tags. Um, those bulls uh, were harassed dramatically last year with 96 hunters and so it's not just going from 96 to 97 now you have uh, a season where there, there's a good chance that uh, we'll have even a, a worse reaction for, for some of those bull groups to to the same number of hunters Do you know what they were in 2008 there, there was about 40 some it's part just a point of clarification chairman um, when we had in 2008 the quota was 46 47 something in that neighborhood uh, that winter we got a significant survey in there and realized that perhaps the population uh, was larger than we had estimated uh, made that adjustment and then at the quota setting meeting the season setting meeting had already occurred so the season setting meeting occurred in February those quotas are set later uh, so the quota was set at 96 now this this past year we were in that interim year of the two-year cycle this isn't a, a liberty uh, that the department takes very often and it's only made with the sportsman's best interest in mind and our responsibility to manage those hurts 57 I just I just think that when we set a rule up like you know let's set some standards like demand success that everybody agrees on and to the best of our ability, maintain instead of increasing it to some of the lower success weapon groups where there's not that many tags. Commissioner McBeth. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, over the last few years that I've been involved in this process, we've talked about demand and success, but we've never, I don't recall us ever making a rigid rule that we stick by it in all instances and that uh, we have uh, had uh, the discretion and the flexibility to make numerous changes for numerous different reasons and and when it just seems that when we get um, uh, the folks out of the cabs and and outfitters that are basically telling you we've got a, a real problem here um, then I, I just struggle with this being so inflexible that we we don't address that problem because I I I think that the lesser of these two evils that have been identified here is clearly not causing uh, the congestion that's going to cause angry hunters because what in my mind if I'm drawing a tag in this area and and I go there and I have a, a very poor quality hunt because I got people crawling all over me I, I think that I'm going to be very upset 
and I think that's what they're trying to avoid and and it just seems that we need to use our discretion and not be so rigid and 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 have uh, you know you know recognize a problem and head it off at the pass so to speak and and so I I, I just you know I, I understand it demand success I think it's a good concept and in general I just think that we need to be uh, you know flexible and uh, and address issues uh, like this it seems that me if this is a one year deal and we're gonna have a we'll, we'll, we'll look at the seasons next year we'll have a split season we'll address it there that'll re resolve the problem we'll be back into the demand success you know based on a new uh, season structure thank you we had, uh, Commissioner Cooper. very short comment yes they have deviated from demand success one or two or three sometimes one way or the other. This is going from <laughs> 8 to 31. That's not a small change. And that is a wide uh, variation from demand success. And I suggest the solution is we go with the demand success values for muzzleloader and archery and ask for uh, 90 rifle tags to try to avert. We've, we've already got a motion. We're 97 demand success on the floor right now, and I'm going to process that motion. Does everyone understand the motion, or do you want me to repeat it again? I'll repeat it if you want it. What do you want me to do? I think you should repeat it. Okay. I'll repeat the motion, and I've got a motion and a second. And Hunt 4151 from 88 to change it to 97, which is demand success. And 072, 074 late, change to 80. 2, 131, 132 late, change to 21, 161 to 164 late, change to 49, hunt 4156, 061 to 071, change to 17, uh, hunt 4161, 061, 071, change to 12, 072, 074, change to 18, Hunt 4181, 072 early, change to 80. 074 early, change to 21. Hunt 4176, 072, change to 23. Hunt 4111, 072, change to 19. That's a motion. Not even any discussion. I'll call for the uh, motion. All for the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Aye. Three opposed. Motion carries. Go ahead, Mike. Next hunt is the non residents uh, rifle hunt 4251, non resident bull. Um, in light of your recommendation that was approved for 231. Um, I'm not sure if we need to address the reduction. Go ahead. But you can, yeah, you can hear from the Lincoln County. Uh, Corey Lytle Lincoln, our recommendation was just based on uh, some of the stuff that was already discussed, and I just don't think the formula will work out if we try to reduce from 11 to 10 on. Uh, the rifle and also on the muzzle loader. Which one you're talking about now? On 4251, we wanted to uh, drop from 11 to 10 in units 231, 241, 242. That would, would have been a reflection on changes to the resident hunts. And also on 4256, same unit, 231, 242, 241, going from 5 to 4, reflecting the 10% non resident cap. But I do not. See that is possible now. Anybody else from any county board? Public? No, I don't. I do want to point out, and this occurs for all species, um, that especially when you have a species where we don't have a companion non resident hunt for every resident hunt. So, for example, we only have three non resident muzzleloader unit groups open. Uh, since the Tallman lawsuit, we have done everything we can to make sure there's a 90% resident 
and a 10% non-resident split statewide because you can't do it unit by unit because there's not a companion non-resident for every resident unit group. So what I have to do is after all of our recommendations are done, I go back and I look at did we, did we meet the 10% uh, for non-residents? And, and for elk, we don't because we're missing some units. So uh, in the case of unit 231, um, I had to add an extra tag, or I guess we could take away a tag. Uh, if I added a tag to 231, 41, and 242 to get over, it was at 9%. Now I, I needed to get at least a 10. Uh, it actually bumps it to 11%. Um, but I have to do that for, for bighorn sheep. We've always had to do that for that, but uh, for the, for the muzzleloader, archery, um, try to get a 9-10 split statewide. What do you want to do in these three guns? Well, you... You recommended more. Non-resident tags. We reduce the uh, uh, more bull resident tags in six one seven one. Uh, and in six one through six one one six one through one six four, the rest of them were were not uh, appreciable increases. Yeah, well, it's it's still at 10%. This thing's active, so it's, it, there's some rounding. Um, If if we yeah if we actually do reduce, uh, reduce the forty two fifty six quota for two thirty one two forty one two forty two to four, we'll be back to ten point four percent. So I guess maybe I'd ask that uh, the archery is at nine point nine. So I, I guess I would ask that you would actually reduce. From five to four, the two thirty one, two forty one, two forty two. Public comment, ready for vote, ready for motion. I understand. We reduce the yeah. thirty one. That's he said. He said leave and, that and that was due to. We, we reduced the muzzle loader in 06171 from 31 to 17. So we took uh, <coughs> 14 resident muzzle loader tags away. So to make to balance it, take that one, take one muzzle loader unit tag away, and then we'll be back to 90 <coughs> split statewide. Want to give me a motion? Should we do public? Any public comment on this? Those in public comment, let's bring it back. Commissioner Reigns. Okay, move to approve Hunt 4251 as proposed by the department. Hunt 4256 changing 231, 241, 242 from 5 to 4. 4261 as proposed by the department. Second. Who's second that? Second Commissioner Cabrera. The motion is to on Hunt 4251 as proposed by the department. On Hunt 4256, change Hunt 231, 241, 242 from 5 <coughs> to 4. Hunt 4261 as proposed by the department. Everybody understand that? Call for the motion. All for the motion say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Next. Next up is big orange sheep. We'll start with desert.
just had a few um, different recommendations from uh, three counties. Let them speak for the desert. Bighorn on 3151. That uh, the game boards, advisory boards speak oh, okay. on their alternative recommendations. Gary Coleman, Persian County Advisory Board. Um, our board recommended in area 04408 or 182, uh, they increased the tags from six or from five to six this year. We we feel that there's an adequate number of sheep in that range, but not an adequate number of rams. So we think we should stick with the five quota in that unit. <clears throat> and then 205 North and 205 South, seems to me over the last four or five years the quality in both of those units have been dropping off, especially in the South. And um, it's reflecting in the South, you know, by the quality and age of rams both. Last year, you know, in both units they harvested um, two less rams out of each of the units in the, the quota. And um, I had approximately in the South, I had 14 days of hunting and then I scouted for approximately six days and the biggest ram we seen was 149 inches and he was six years old and we ended up killing him at the end of the season and we we hunted that unit from one end to the other and I just don't we didn't see the number of rams period not even small rams to justify the number of tags in the south the north I mean there's still a couple decent rams floating in there but I think they're over harvesting them and um, if we could reduce that by two tags to let them get a little bit of age because um, they, they didn't harvest two rams out of there either so those both units had great potential and I think over the last four or five years we've over harvested out of both units and um, that's our recommendations. Any other county boards? For the record, Tom Castanelli with Humboldt County. Um, as you can see, we concurred with um, with Pershing County on 044 and 082 from 6 to 5. And my reason was we agreed with the department on everything else this year, and I, I needed to get up here at least for <laughs> some. <laughs> if you know, at years past, I've, I've usually dominated the podium for... <laughs> But I want you to know this is going to be a record year for us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anybody, any other county board? If not, I'll close the uh, uh, public hearing from the county boards and the public and bring it back to the commission. Uh, my, I had a couple questions here. Um, in, in, in 267, uh, we have two non-resident and four residents. And shouldn't we change that to only one non-resident? We have the 90-10 split. Um, we have the units that are available for the non-residents. And uh, trying to find a home for the amount of tags, that would equate to 10%. We just, that's kind of where we stuck an extra tag. Uh, now if we, if any, if there's a tag reduction in the residents in your recommendation, then that might end up having to, us to take a tag away from the non-resident. Uh, and we, you know, that we might consider that particular unit. We do have 
recommendations from two other counties uh, that they would like to reduce the non-resident tag or, or take it out of a unit of their choice and put it somewhere else. But at the end of the motion, we, we have to have that 90-10 split. And, and so whatever we end up with, we got to make sure we put that tag somewhere. Uh, love to get suggestions for the 2011 season from from the advisory boards of you know adding adding more non-resident units to the to the list there's no better place to put it i wouldn't say better there's different places to put it uh, why did you put it there let me ask you that I, I don't remember. We could have put it in the McCulloughs, uh, the North Eldorados, uh, the Clan Alpines, or the Pancakes, too. Uh, the other question I had on uh, 253, uh, could we have increased that one? You know, based on our surveys, our population model, uh, and our opportunity, well, and the elimination of two PIW tags and a heritage, and you know, we went from two to five, assuming that we weren't going to have uh, two PIW and that extra heritage harvesting. So b based on our numbers, uh, we, we felt five was and that was based on our 50% of our six-year-old or older or 8% of all RAMs, the guidelines we have in the statewide big horn sheep management plan. We had, we had some testimony. There was a lot of sheep in there. We don't want to stockpile them. Mean. I'm just giving you what, we, what our estimate is for that herd in terms of the RAM segment and what that equates to following our statewide plan is, is five tags. And I, you, were, you, were t you were telling us last year that we had whacked them all and killed them all and that we had to reduce tags. And now you're saying that there's a bunch of them left and we need to put more tags in there. I'm confused. No, you're, you're confused. I did not say we got, we're whacking them all. I said the, uh, the special tags were whacking them all and the residents were not getting enough opportunity to hunt in there. That's what I said, Mike. Well, we went from two to five. I understand that. Yes. Also had testimony that there's a lot of sheep in there and they're a transient bunch and, you know, maybe Cass, Tom Casnelli could talk about that. Uh, I don't know if we can go. I asked the question. Well, we, we totally understand the movement from the bombing range across Beatty Wash into the Bears, yeah. uh, which actually is, is maintaining that high quota. Because right. if you look at the number of ewes and lambs on that mountain, there's no way they can support uh, all those mature rams we've been taking out of there. So we, we are aware of the influx. Tom? Yeah, I testified at the Tom Castanelli for representing Tom Castanelli on this issue. I testified we were in there um, at the last hunter with the PIW hunter last year. And there's plenty of rams there, but I would recommend keeping it five until we have the, until we have the season split. The problem there is people start running over each other. You're back to the same number of hunters that were there last year. And next year, I think it's season setting. I think we do need to look at that and maybe have a season split and then look at having or and in the, Next year, we got to realize we're going to have PIW hunters back in there. I, I think we need to relook at that issue. Uh, you said special hunters were using that. We never took any special hunters out of that group. All we took was PIW hunters, which were general sportsmen. The two PIW yeah. hunters that you're not allowing in there were general sportsmen anyway. Yeah. We took out the. Uh... They're they're going this year. I guarantee you, they'll be there. You didn't take them out this year. No, and... we know, but they're out next year. Yeah. 
but I, I, I feel we need to revisit that issue too. I think by splitting the season, we could have solved that problem. And I think it's going to, you know, we're going to run into problems there. But I, I, I feel comfortable.